Welcome back, everyone. So far, we've done one array question and one medium array question. Now we're going to do one hard array question. And this is going to be a great question because it's not going to bring together everything that we've learned in our previous two questions, but it's going to push them to their furthest limits and really test how well we can problem solve and apply our critical thinking. Now, I actually really love this question because of this exact reason. It really makes us have to flex our abstract thinking in order to understand how to come up with a good logical solution before we even do the coding part. Because the hardest part of these questions is always the portion where we have to figure out how we rationally solve this question, whether it be for the brute force first solution or for the optimal solution. In fact, it's very often with the optimal solution that it feels like it's almost like a brain teaser, that there's some kind of mental trick that we have to step outside of our comfort zone and think outside of the box in order to get to. And that's actually kind of what it is. It is almost like a critical thinking puzzle where you have to look at the basic information that's in front of you and see if you can think deeply and derive some patterns and hints that will guide you towards knowing what technical tricks or what data structures and algorithms to apply in order to solve the question. And this question really demonstrates that. I know that this is a hard question and it seems like we're going a little fast, but I don't want you to be intimidated because we really need to be able to apply our critical thinking through challenging questions. Because the more challenging the question, the more we actually glean once we solve it. Okay, okay. That's enough talk from me. Let's just move on to the question. So this question asks, given an array of integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is one, return how much rainwater can be trapped. Now, don't let the elevation map term confuse you. This is very similar to our last question. In fact, we'll see it in an example here. Imagine we were given this array. How this looks like is going to map out into this bar chart here, which is very similar, if not identical to our previous question. The only difference is that the width of the bar is one here, which means that it plays a role into the actual question. What we also need to notice is that these elements are now pushed together. Whereas in our last question, there was some inherent distance between the bars themselves. Here, the only distance is when the element is zero. You can see that throughout this bar chart, there are some gaps in space at the very bottom. And that is when an element in the array has zero in its value. Other than that, there is no actual distance between our bars. Now, what we have to imagine is that given a chart like this, if rain were to fall down onto this chart, how much water would get trapped? Well, here I've visualized it for you as these blue boxes. And all we really have to do is just count the number of blue blocks here. And we'll see that in the first, there's one blue box. In the second blue area, there are three. And then in the third blue area, there are four blue blocks. So you just add that together, one plus three plus four, which gives us eight. And that's what we would return as the answer. There are eight units of water. So this question, when we visualize it, looks actually very simple. But when we actually have to solve this logically without some kind of visual aid, it becomes more challenging. But the first step, as you know, we have to do is verify our constraints. This question is a little bit more clear, so there's not as many constraints here, but it's still good to ask some. The first one we should ask is, do the left and right sides of the graph count as walls? We asked this question with our last graph. We should ask this question with this graph. We'll get pretty much the same answer. No, the sides are not walls. And we can actually see this demonstrated in this example we looked at earlier, where we saw that this area here didn't have a blue block. Well, that's because we couldn't form any container using the left wall of the chart and the first block in our actual array. So here we know that the sides cannot be used to form anything that will trap water. The next question we can ask is, will there be negative integers? And here we can say no, assume all integers are positive. 
And that's actually all of the constraints that we need in order to figure out this question. It's actually a pretty straightforward question because we have a visual idea of what we're looking for, and there's not much here that could really affect how we might think about edge cases. So let's move on to the next step, which is where we write out some test cases. So for our first test case, let's actually just use that same array that we had when we first came up with an example. So here I'm going to say that it's going to be an array that gets 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, 2. And remember with this one that the correct answer was 8. And we'll explore it later as well when we actually think about our solution, but this is going to be our best case test case. We also know that we want an array where we get something like an empty array, and then the answer will be 0. And also if we get an array of one value, let's say it's 3, we also get 0. And just for good measure, we'll also say we'll get something like this, where it's 3, 4, 3, and here we'll also expect 0. Because if we were to chart this one as a graph, we would see that if we assume that these were our tick marks, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that this would look something like this. Which, as we can see, can trap no water because we can't use this wall in order to store any water here, and then any water here would just essentially fall off. And this is actually enough test cases for us to move on to our next step, which is to come up with a solution without code. I'm going to challenge you to do this step yourself because this is a very important way for you to really figure out how to work your critical thinking muscle, even with the brute force solution. This is a difficult question, and it has enough similarities to what we've done before that you might actually be able to figure out a way yourself. Once you have a solution, you can compare it to mine. But if you're a little bit confused, no worries. We're going to cover it in the next lesson.